In the race for space exploration, SpaceX once again demonstrates its groundbreaking vision for superior efficiency compared to traditional companies like NASA. Instead of spending over a billion U.S. dollars on a launch tower built over 10 years like NASA, SpaceX used only a tenth of that amount and time. In today's episode of Alpha Tech, let's find out how SpaceX has completely humiliated NASA. Launch pads and launch towers are fundamental structures designed primarily to support the weight of rockets and provide a stable platform for takeoff. Therefore, if a rocket's considered an arrow, then the launch infrastructure complex is the bow in the string. They need to be extremely flexible and strong to ensure a successful launch. Similarly, for a rocket launch, the more efficiently the launch pad and tower work, the more certain the success of the launch. Furthermore, if we look at the construction of a reputable, high-quality ground infrastructure that's also quick and cost-effective, the entire rocket development project will be halfway to success even before the rocket flies or has already flown. However, not everyone can achieve this. NASA, the leading space agency in the U.S., has spent several billion dollars on its rocket launch pad alone. But it doesn't fully guarantee stable operation, and there have been some unexpected malfunctions. After all, only Elon's private space company has managed to create a massive launch tower that can save costs for the first time. As of February last year, each SpaceX Mechazilla launch tower is estimated to cost under 100 mil. This cost does not increase much with the water deluge system. The metal tower segments aren't expensive, and the towers have robotic arms and the power to operate them. Of course, to determine whether this goes well or not, we need to await until SpaceX completes the test flights of Starship. Certainly, Mechazilla launch tower will be an unrivaled launch infrastructure. Continuous repairs and upgrades are carried out through lessons learned from each launch, making the launch infrastructure increasingly reliable. Now, the space company owns two launch towers, one at LC-39A in Florida and another at Starbase, Texas. However, SpaceX aims to further increase the launch frequency and reusability of Starship in the future by constructing a second launch tower at Starbase right next to the current one they're using. The process is proceeding quickly as SpaceX has gained experience from building the previous two launch towers. Due to this experience, the company decided to partially change the launch pad design for the second launch tower. What will be the final height of the tower? Currently, the info is conflicting. Elon has stated that the tower will be significantly taller. However, to make a substantial height difference, the tower would need more segments to build, but so far we haven't seen any clear signs. Furthermore, SpaceX has begun stacking activities, which reduces the likelihood of constructing a significantly taller tower. Therefore, despite initial claims of a taller tower, the actual construction seems to be aiming for a design with a similar height to Tower 1, which is 145 meters. Honestly, I still hope for a more distinct new launch tower. What do you think about this? Let us know your opinion in the comments down below, and please like and subscribe if you liked today's episode. But it's not without definite changes. SpaceX has completely improved the foundation of a launch tower. Before starting the construction of Tower 2's base, SpaceX carried out pile foundation work. This is to ensure the heavy weight of the tower can be supported by the ground at Starbase, which is mainly mud, sand, and water. Instead of relying on this weak ground, SpaceX drilled down to the bedrock and installed large reinforced concrete piles, similar to stilts, to support the weight. We can see the changes in the last two sections of the tower, making segment 9 much heavier. This will help ensure the solidity of this entire system, and Elon believes that Tower B will be sturdy after a thousand landings. With such a structure, SpaceX will not use the old tool, the, the Libra LR11350 crane, also known as the Franken crane for the first tower. That's when the Demog CC8801 crane, a larger type of crane, comes in. According to our research, this giant crawler crane has a max lifting capacity of 3,200 tons, compared to the Franken crane's 1,650 tons. The orbital launch mount, OLMB, will have a south-facing launch pad. Info regarding the future shape of the OLM is still unclear, but since the old OLM structure in Florida was demolished a few months ago, the current six-legged design may no longer be suitable. This is likely due to a recent Starship flight showing the SpaceX team the benefits of the tripod as well as the flaws of the current structure. Therefore, researching and redrawing the design plans is a mandatory requirement. The viewpoint is disputed by others because any change in the foundation will lead to a complete redesign, meaning they'd have to start from scratch. It'd take more time, not to mention the current floodwater system with the OLM is still good. However, if that can happen, someday, the original launch pad at Starbase might also be demolished and rebuilt. The timeline for completing the construction of SpaceX's new launch tower is still uncertain. 
However, since construction began in early second quarter, it's possible the project will be finished by next year, less than around a year. When setting up the previous launch system, SpaceX took over a year, from around July 2020 to August 2021, to complete basic structures such as the launch mount, launch tower, and Mechazilla arms. After the first flight, we took additional time, extending over a few months, to integrate the floodwater suppression system beneath the launch pad. Given the experience gained, the construction of the new launch tower may progress faster, potentially facilitating readiness no earlier than first quarter 2025. So, now how has SpaceX's launch towers humiliated NASA? First, SpaceX is capable of constructing Mechazel within a relatively short time frame, around 10 months at the Starbase facility and potentially even having this time when building a new launch tower in Florida. Meanwhile, a tower constructed by NASA takes two years to build initially and essentially eight years for modifications. At this rate, SpaceX has completely humiliated NASA. In terms of cost, SpaceX's metal launch tower segment is relatively affordable. Standing over 145 meters tall and equipped with robotic arms and the power to operate them, each tower costs approximately $100 million. In contrast, NASA's launch towers are considerably more expensive. NASA's mobile launcher, for instance, comes with a hefty price tag of up to $1 billion. A billion dollars in a decade. Too much expectation, too, and all we got was overwhelming disappointment. It's also the launch tower used by NASA for the space launch system, which not only faced significant delays and cost overruns, but is also considered a single-use structure, discarded after the initial rocket launch. Thanks to SpaceX's cost-efficient development approach without compromising quality, the expenditure for a Starship launch is around $2 bucks a mission. While this may seem substantial, it's a small fraction compared to the current average launch cost for NASA, which stands at $152 million every launch. In essence, if Elon's vision holds true, SpaceX could potentially achieve missions for cargo and humans at just 1.3% of the cost that NASA currently incurs for similar missions. Now, NASA is working on a second mobile launcher to accommodate the larger Block 1B version of the SLS rocket. Bechtel won this contract to design and build the second larger mobile launcher for $383 million by March 2023. This would be about one-third the cost of the first mobile launcher in half the time. Past performance suggests that this is unlikely. Bechtel was awarded the original contract to construct the ML-2 in 2019 for $383 million, with the completion originally promised by spring 2023. Cost increases and design delays piled on through 2022, prompting NASA's Office of the Inspector General to audit the program. Its findings released last June showed the total projected cost was already expected to hit $960 million, or two and a half times more than originally planned. The delivery, initially expected to be delayed until October next year, fortunately for NASA, finally took place on May 9, 2024. On that date, the contractor of Bechtel National Incorporated and the teams with NASA's Exploration Ground Systems EGS program delivered the main infrastructure of Mobile Launcher 2 to Florida. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and catch you next time. Bye.